welcome to Diecast Restos. My name is Jason and this is the 44B Rolls-Royce Phantom 5 in Lesney's matchbox range from 1964 to 1967. It came in two different shades, either a metallic mauve or a silver grey. The model had this opening boot lid for added play value. This example is fairly scratched and untidy, but the worst part is something you as viewers cannot see. It's another sense entirely, the smell. It stinks of cigarette smoke. It must have spent a good number of years in the possession of a chain smoker to smell quite as strongly as this does. The interior has yellowed slightly as well. Here's a pic of the real roller Phantom 5 on which the model is based. The metallic mauve versions of the car come with a silver trim to the grille and headlights, but due to the similarity, it's unlikely trim was ever applied to the silver grey cars. All models had the ivory coloured plastic interior, a clear windscreen and black base plate with grey, silver or black wheels. So after drilling off the base, threading the post and removing the wheels, here are all the component pieces. Now the base, body and boot lid are prepped for paint removal using caustic soda. Eight hundred and thirty-two Rolls-Royce Phantom 5 limousines were produced between 1959 and 1968. It was based on the Silver Cloud 2. Incidentally, the Silver Cloud first generation was the precursor to the Phantom 5 in the Matchbox series. The Phantom's wheelbase was 144 inches or 3.6 meters in length. It had a 6.2 litre V8 with twin carburettors. Bodies were coach built by James Young, producing 217 units while Park Ward, who were later merged with H.J. Mulliner, produced 607 bodies. Mulliner had made eight Phantoms prior to this merger. There were a number of famous Phantom 5 owners through the years. Most famously, John Lennon owned a Mulliner Park Ward 1964 Phantom, which received a custom paint job in 1967. This was painted by artist Steve Weaver in a Romany Gypsy wagon style. It consisted of a yellow body with blue, green, orange and red swirls with a Libra figure on the roof. He also bought an all-white Phantom in 1968. Queen Elizabeth II had 1960 and 1961 Phantoms join her fleet. Both were retired from active service in 2002. Yugoslav President Tito had a Phantom 5, as did Romanian dictator Ceausescu. Elton John had a pink 1960 Park Ward, and Liberace had a 1961 Phantom. Elvis Presley had a 1963 James Young Phantom, which had a microphone installed, and had to be repainted light silver as his mother's chickens kept pecking the paint of the original Midnight Blue. I'm pretty sure those words would never have previously been uttered regarding a Rolls Royce. Here I am applying the Tamiya Fine Surface Primer in light grey. A nice smooth finish, with the distinctive grille cutting its way through nicely. Now the paint choice was a bit of a sticky issue. I had looked in various auto shops for a suitable colour that was even remotely close to matching the original. And nothing did, so I decided to try an untested Tamiya paint I ordered in error some time back. This is PS50 Sparkling Pink Anodized Aluminium. I don't think it will now look all that close to the Lesney original, Perhaps more like Elton John's example. After one coat, I'm fairly pleased with the look though, so I stick with it. Besides, I love the look of the anodized sky blue on other models I've done, so maybe this one will grow on me. Next, I use my chrome paint pen to fill out that imposing grille and headlights. This absolutely had to be chrome over silver, as I associate chrome with Rolls Royce when I think of the brand, but this may just be me. I used the finer paint pen to finish the details a little more accurately. And now for the pink paint uh, um, 5 to be reassembled. In goes the cleaned up screen over the old rivet in the roof. Next up is the boot lid that is positioned over the protrusions in the casting that held it in place. Then the interior 
with the translucent suspension attached can be positioned in the cabin. Finally, the repainted black base is placed over the front rivet and the rear slots into the hole at the back. So here is the dull, scratched and disgusting smelling Phantom prior to restoration. It wasn't a challenging build particularly, other than matching the paint, which wasn't really a match at all in the end. I guess I'll have to title this video a custom slash restoration. It was mostly done to get rid of the stench that was left from the smoke. I'd had to keep it sealed in a bag until now. So here is what it looks like now. Under the studio lights, it looks even more garish and pink than before. It's not quite Elton John levels of pink, but you know what? I quite like it. The more I look at it, the more it kind of suits. Gone is the chipped murky paint job, gone is the dirty windscreen and interior, and gone is the smell, hallelujah. Again, after a clear coat, this anodized aluminium paint really looks the part, and the chrome grille is just what this Phantom needed. Anyway, please let me know what you think in the comments below. Please do subscribe, and hit that bell button for all the latest releases. Don't forget to check out my Patreon for a preview of the next episode, and I will see you again soon. Thanks for watching, bye for now.